Kia ora, good evening. Teachers and principals have voted overwhelmingly against the government's controversial investing in education success policy. A resounding 93% of teachers and principals voted no confidence in the government's plan that would have seen massive pay rises of ten dollars to $40,000 for thousands of teachers. The IES policy was rejected because teachers could see the benefit to children would be negligible. Instead, proposing the $359 million be spent on reducing class sizes, focusing on individual learning and special needs and sustaining funding for support staff. 70% of primary school teachers and principals voted in 83% of schools. A supply problem has caused a delay in the start of work on the inner city upgrade on S Street. A delay in the delivery of pipes required to replace the ageing water mains in Esk Street has meant that work scheduled to be underway on the 11th of this month has been put back until next week. The water mains running under Esk Street must first be replaced before cosmetic, up, cosmetic upgrade work can be undertaken. The City Council is working to a tight schedule and aims to have Esk Street work completed in November for the onset of Christmas shopping. A City Council spokesperson says the two-week delay in starting water main replacement is not expected to prevent the project being finished on time. Venture Southland is set to host an events forum next month and are encouraging anyone involved in organising events to come and attend. They're also launching the Southland Event Planning Guide, a one-off resource to help professional development of people and companies with events. The two-day forum will include a dummies guide to creating an event and how to maximise opportunities across advertising spectrums. So we've got uh, two, two big projects. Um, the first is a new event planning guide for all of the coordinators and groups out there who put on events and then we're going to be launching that at a, an events forum which is a two day um, workshop at ILT Stadium Southland. So who would benefit from attending that type of thing? Anyone who puts on events or is thinking of putting on events, uh, so it could be school groups, it could be you know the likes of the YMCA, it could be the, the, the bigger groups and committees who put on some of our bigger events like the Bluff Oyster and Seafood Festival, the Burt Munro Challenge, that sort of thing. So uh, with the number of events that we have down here there are a lot of groups and people who could benefit. Can you t talk us through some of the topics that will be covered off? Well, we're trying to cover all aspects of uh, event management. So we're talking about things like health and safety, uh, marketing, sponsorship, funding, um, environmental practices, staffing and volunteers. And to complement all of those aspects, we've got some keynote speakers coming in to talk about their respective events and uh, different projects that they've been involved with. Got a cap on how many can attend this, Jade? Well, we are restricted in terms of the size of the space, but uh, because we've hired the whole of the corporate um, space at the stadium, that number is quite high. You're trying to get some ideas from an international level as well. You've got some um, speakers coming that have been away overseas recently, so you're tr trying to pull ideas from them about what they've experienced? That's right. We've got our gold medalists, Eddie Dawkins and Matt Archibald, coming in. Uh, they'll be talking with Nathan Burden from the Southland Times about their experience at the Commonwealth Games, uh, not just as participants, but also in terms of how the event itself ran, uh, best case practice, that sort of thing, um, security, all of the different aspects that made up the Commonwealth Games, made it successful and uh, how they found it. One of the big things of course with pulling off a good event is having a good sponsor. You are going to be looking at relationships with sponsors as well. It's uh, yeah, one of the uh, things we'll be discussing and we are bringing in sponsors to talk about what works for them, uh, how, uh, that, how other sponsors can leverage from events and how events can work alongside their sponsors a lot better than perhaps some currently do. Dreams are coming true for nine Southland kids today as Koru Care Southland sends them on the trip of a lifetime. It's destination Disneyland for these lucky kids thanks to the hard work and dedication of Southland volunteers at Koru Care Southland. The charity has been sending children with different illnesses and disabilities on their dream holidays for 10 years. The trips are made possible by a combination of donations from community organisations, the public and regular donations from Air New Zealand. It takes us the whole year to fundraise. We are actually lucky in a sense that we've got some great sponsors here in, in Invercargill that support us. And, um, you know, uh, if it's not for them, you know, we wouldn't be able to make these trips. So it costs us, we do two trips a year, uh, one to Australia and one to Disneyland. It costs us $90,000 a year to be able to do these two trips. Here. My name's Cheyenne. Okay, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, the Haunted House. What's the Haunted House? Tell me about that. 
Um, it's a scary place that you go to in the United States. And it, like rooms full up with sand and stuff like that. And which fly around, which is fly around. <laughs> Does that not worry you a wee bit? Yeah, kind of. Jordan, what are you looking forward to the most? Um, going to Disneyland and yeah, going on all the rides. What are you expecting? Um, fun. <laughs> and what about you? Do you want to come around here? All right, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Ben. Ben, what are you looking forward to the most? Just being in America will be pretty sick. And what are you expecting in America? Um, hot weather, not like here. <laughs> um, just fun roller coaster rides and things, having a good time. Very good. And what sort of roller coasters are you looking forward to? Are you going to try them all? Big ones, Knox Reef Farm especially. Just the big ones there. So go hard or go home? Yeah, go hard or go home. Stay with us after the break. Labour's candidate Leslie Soper on dirty politics and it's Red Nose Day. Welcome back. Labour's candidate for Invercargill, Leslie Soper, says there's a risk that Nikki Haga's book, Dirty Politics, will distract from good policy discussion in the lead up to this September's election. The Invercargill candidate says the last week has not changed her campaign planning. She says the majority of people she encounters want to talk about policy, not dirty politics. From my point of view, I'm staying very much on the vote positive. Look, that's obviously going on. There are people in Invercargill who want to talk about their current concerns about breaches of privacy, how far the, the um, inappropriate behaviour has gone up the chain of command in the National Party and so forth. But the majority of people in Invercargill actually want to talk about a positive message, which is about jobs, homes, families, and a future for Invercargill and regional development here. So very much I'm concentrating on that. I'm, I'm staying on the positive message, we can improve New Zealand and make things better. Some murky things have gone on, some, an investigation going on into those, and I'm staying very much on the positive message. I guess uh, some Labor Party members would be concerned that Cameron Slater, it looks like Cameron Slater and Jason Eid have had a look inside um, Labor Party personal records. Uh, I, I mean, that would not be comforting for them, would it, to know possibly what they've donated and things like that to the party? The thing that people, I suppose, are most worried about is the actual breach of, breach of the ethics of IT involved there, because generally the accepted thing is if you discover that someone's website has got some... Compromised. Open, yeah. The, the generally accepted behaviour in the IT world is that you tell them that they need a patch. That wasn't done. I think what people are most offend, you know, quite offended by is that there were multiple entries and that convention was completely ground down and it's that whole issue of integrity. There's a line that gets crossed in the political world that you can never go back. So many people have said to me, this whole issue more than anything else shows that a line got crossed very early on. It says something deep about the integrity of people who were prepared to do that. In your in your time in Parliament, did you encounter do you encounter radical people on the left that would perhaps um, undertake the, what Cameron Slade has done for the right? No, no. I think one of the things that has been um, quite revealing about this is the number of people from the right who have said to me how ashamed they are that that this seems to be going on on the right side of politics. So from here on in with the campaign, and we're getting down there, it is uh, getting closer, it, it is you're just pushing that, that vote, vote positive uh, slogan? As far as I'm concerned, it is all about the future for New Zealanders and the, the important things people want to talk about are the homes, families, jobs, future, and in Invercargill's case, that whole future of you know where is regional development going and why hasn't the government been putting regional development money into actually creating jobs in the future here, right here in Invercargill. Do you think this is all proving too much of a big distraction and are people being dragged away from that policy perspective and the media, it is dominating the media isn't it, is the media getting a bit obsessed I guess is what I'm saying? The, the more that comes out the more the media is talking about this, I suppose the more potential there is to turn off voters that disturbs me. 
um, you know, we want this to be a positive election where there's a high turnout that, and people really have their say. More about policy than personality? Absolutely about, about the policy, about what's best for New Zealand and in my case for Invercargill. And National Candidate Sarah Dowie was campaigning in Riverton today. She says it's business as usual for her and she too is not distracted by the dirty politics saga. Red was the colour of the day for Invercargill's ABC South today as children got into the spirit of Red Nose Day. The children celebrated with a fun-filled day of baking and painting to fundraise for the charity event. Red Nose Day sees money raised countrywide for Cure Kids, a charity dedicated to finding cures for life-threatening illnesses. ABC South was just one of Invercargill's participants with businesses such as Main Freight and the Southern District Health Board both taking part. And that's it from us. We'll leave you now with the week that was from the news team. Have a safe weekend. Good night. Oh uh -huh.